What is up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be going over some basic passing tips for trans masculine people, uh, female to male, trans people. If you're new here, my name is Dakota. I am transgender, FTM. That means I was assigned female at birth, but I transitioned to male. Um, and these are just some basic tips that I kind of used when I was pre-T or when I was really early on in T and I didn't really pass very well as a cis guy. This is just some of the stuff that I used as a reference in order to help pass in public. And before anybody says, oh, but what about my individualism? What about me as a person? If I'm following all of these tips and tricks and I'm following these trends, how am I gonna be myself? That's a great point. Individualism is important, but you can also apply it to these tips. Like I said, you don't have to follow these tips word for word. You can add a little flair into whatever you do, however you would like to. You can throw in your own personal touches like your favorite pair of socks, you could wear a cool hat, you could wear pride pins, you know, whatever makes you comfortable, you can throw that in here. Again, this is just a basic video on how to kind of get started on presenting more masculine and passing as a masculine person. The four basic things that we're gonna go over in this video is, first of all, packing, creating the illusion of a bulge in your pants. Second up, we're gonna cover binding, which is flattening your chest. Thirdly, we're gonna cover haircuts, how you can kind of get your hair cut at the barber shop, what to ask for. And then lastly, we're gonna go over clothing, what clothes to wear in order to pass better, how to style clothes so that they kind of like mask your curves and anything like that. So yeah, those are the four like main topics that we're gonna go over in this video. Let's go ahead and get into the first point, which is packing. First tip for packing, if you're going to pack, I would really recommend avoiding larger sized packers. This is a kind of self-explanatory tip. You really don't want to be in line at Starbucks looking like you're pitching a tent while you're looking at the fucking menu. And most cis guys are growers and not showers anyway, so walking around with such a large bulge is just uncomfortable for you and for the people around you. It kind of draws attention to that area. For me personally, I feel like packing isn't about drawing attention to what's in your pants, but it's more of a personal comfort level type thing. Obviously, if you pack with a seven inch packer, that's gonna be really uncomfortable. You're not gonna be able to fit it into tighter pants and you're just gonna walk around looking like a fucking idiot. Some of the places that I've looked to buy packers from, especially when I was like kind of on a smaller budget and I didn't have a lot of money to spend on say like a prosthetic from like Real Magic or Gender Cat where their products are a bit more expensive. I would definitely check out Trans Guy Supply. That's a great resource to look into. My current packer that I use is from Peacock. I do really recommend Peacock. They are a bit more expensive, but the quality is great. They last for a long time. Another place that people shop from a lot is Free Tom. I have had kind of like shitty experiences with their packers, so personally I would not buy from them. They do have more of like budget-friendly options. And lastly, if you are comfortable with supporting Jeff Bezos or buying from Amazon, you can definitely buy packers off of Amazon, but they do have some soft packers. That's actually where I bought my very first packer ever. Or if you're not really sure about whether or not you want to actually invest in an actual packer, you can literally just go into your dresser drawers, grab a pair of socks, kind of mold it into whatever shape you feel comfortable with and then just stick that in your underwear to kind of get used to the sensation of having something there, get used to how it looks, having a bulge in your pants or between your legs, then I would definitely recommend starting off with just a good pair of socks. But yeah, those are like the basic tips that I have for packing. I go way more in depth in my packing video. That's gonna be linked in the description of this video and there'll also be like a card or something here that you can click on. I don't really pack anymore. This is just stuff that helps me kind of like navigate the world of packing when I first started. So on to our second point, we're gonna talk about binding now. Binding is basically the process of making your chest as flat as possible. There's two main ways to bind. You can buy a binder or you can use chest tape. If you're going to use a binder, please, dear God, buy a binder from a reputable brand. Do not buy one of those like cheap side clasping binders or front clasping binders from like Wish, Amazon, Shein, or anything like that. Those are super dangerous and they can really fuck up your ribs and your lungs. Before I had top surgery, I bought all of my binders from GC2B. However, I have heard in recent years that their quality has kind of gone down the drain a little bit. They don't last as long. They're not as tight and as compressing as they used to be. I have heard great things about Underworks binders as well as Spectrum binders. I've heard awesome things about both of those companies, so I would definitely check check those companies out. I'm gonna link their stores in the description of this video so you can go look for yourself. Once you find the right company for you and once you find the right binder for you, please, dear God, take your measurements. I know it can be uncomfortable, but take your measurements and buy the proper size binder. If you buy a binder that's too small, it could really, like I said earlier, mess up your ribs, mess up your lungs, and it could damage your chest tissue, which might affect your top surgery results later on. And of course, if you buy a binder that's too large, it won't bind you properly. Basically just act like an undershirt, kind of, not really an actual binder. So please make sure that you're buying the right size. Now for chest tape. 
I bought from TransTape specifically, and when I started buying their chest tape, they were a really like small startup company. They have definitely grown in recent years, and they have tons more sizes of tapes for different sized chests, and they also have different skin tones now than they did when I first started binding with them. The reason that I liked taping over binding is because it didn't feel as restricting. I could go work out with the tape on. I could go around shirtless with the tape on and not really worry about looking like I was wearing a tank top or anything like that. The tape matched my skin tone, so from far away, it just looked like I was just a regular shirtless guy. Please, dear God, do not bind with duct tape, ace bandages, or like we said earlier, those cheap clasp binders from any other website like Amazon or Wish. They're very dangerous, they can cause permanent damage to your body, and you should really try to bind as safely and as properly as possible. Listen to your body. If you feel like you need a break, take a fucking break. I promise you, it's not the end of the world, and you can always put the binder back on or put the tape back on later. Okay, so now that we have packing and binding out of the way, we're gonna talk about hair and how you can get your hair cut to help you pass more. Obviously, people associate shorter haircuts with masculinity, but there are a lot of cis guys out there who have longer hair. Think along the lines of like Harry Styles in his frat boy era circa like 2015. You know, he had the long hair, but it was never really styled. He would throw it up in like a messy bun, wear like a bandana, stuff like that. So you can definitely look at reference pictures like that if you want to keep your hair longer. Haircuts can be very scary when you're pre-t or early on in your transition. Barber shops can be very scary. If you're not comfy going to a barber shop, but you don't want to go to a, like a women's salon or something like that, you can find some unisex, queer friendly, like LGBT friendly salons. I wouldn't call them salons really because they do both men and women cuts. There are tons of shops like that out there. You just have to kind of like dig around and look for them. Now, when you go to get your haircut, whether you're at a barber shop, a salon, do not be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to say, hey, I want it specifically like this, or I don't want you to do this. You need to speak up. Otherwise, you're gonna walk out of the shop looking like Ellen DeGeneres instead of Chris Hemsworth. When you're getting a masculine cut, typically you want harsher lineups, very square, harsh, straight line. Also, don't be afraid to follow any like trendy haircuts. They're trending for a reason. They're very popular currently with the male population. So by association, if you're getting a trendier male haircut, people will most likely associate it with masculinity. Also, don't listen to those bullshit tips that people give out where they're like, oh, don't cut crazy designs into your hair. Don't dye your hair crazy colors. This is where that individuality comes into play that we talked about earlier. If you want to get a fucking mohawk or an undercut and dye it bright hot pink or neon green, fucking do it. Who cares? Nowadays, things that would have gotten me called a trans trender when I first came out back in 2017, these things are becoming more normalized. So you have more freedom in how you can express yourself while passing. Now that we've covered hair, we're gonna go on to our last point in this video, which is clothing, how to dress, where to shop, things like that. When you're thinking about men's fashion, what typically comes to mind is like straight edges, kind of a boxier silhouette. You basically wanna avoid accentuating any curves that you may have. You don't have to shop in the men's section. A lot of stores nowadays are really leaning into the unisex side of fashion. So you can shop on either side of the store and even on the woman's side, I've seen great graphic tees. You can shop on either side. Now, I'm not short, but I'm not super tall either. And one of the things that I used to struggle with and still sometimes do struggle with is finding pants that fit me. Some of the stores that I would really recommend for sh pant shopping, places that I found pants very easily that fit me really well. We have Zoomies, uh, Target is a really great place to find some good pants. If you're in Europe, I really like Pull and Bear and Zara, they have some great pants with a wider range of sizes. And then if you can afford it, if you have a little bit extra money in your budget for clothes, I would definitely recommend checking out American Eagle. Pants aside, most of the stores that I just listed, I still shop at to this day. Uh, places like Zara, Zoomies, H&M, Pull and Bear, Urban Outfitters. Those are places that I would really recommend shopping for just because like I said, they have good products on either side, men or women's. Um, you can really mix and match. Kind of reiterating the point that I said when we were talking about hair, the point of fashion and passing and everything that we've talked about in this video is to make it your own. As you get more and more used to it, you're gonna become more and more confident in it. Confidence in yourself equals confidence in how you pass. Anyways, that's all I'm gonna talk about in this video today. If you have any further questions or if you have any tips that you feel like I didn't cover but would still be helpful to someone else, please leave those comments down in the comment section of this video below. I really hope that this video was helpful for you. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. I have noticed that majority of my watch hours come from people who aren't subscribed rather than people who are subscribed to my channel. So please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Give this video a thumbs up or like it if you enjoyed it and I will see y'all in the next one.